Good evening. This is Map Show, and we are at number 143 tonight, which is really exciting because that brings us very close to three years. And, uh, and our goal is to get to four years on the trot. And of course, we, got, we want to speed things up in the year 2024. We don't want to just have one show a week. We can have multiple shows, and I'm trusting that we might even have shows in other languages. Imagine that, uh, listening to something about Map for Life in a language that you're passionate about, and we'd love to invite you to really engage with Map for Life in 2024 by starting in 2023. Before this year is up, we invite you to become a true mapper, somebody who is engaged with one of the map clubs, a person who's actually using Map for Life on a day-to-day -day basis so that you can literally map the way forward. And so tonight I'm joined by a panel, uh, Glenn Lees Jones from Pretoria, South Africa, and Henny Nivot, all the way from Rudaput in Johannesburg, one of the biggest cities on the continent. And so I trust that uh, they're going to be sharing their insights on what Map for Life means to them and uh, how they've interpreted Map for Life for themselves. Tonight, I want to share just a few thoughts because I often asked, what is Map for Life? <laughs> and, um, and my answer recently has simply been, it's in the name. And... Uh, and, and people look a little bit confused, but I think they ask the question, what is Map for Life? Because it's so obvious. <laughs> you know, they want to just get clarity. To, is this really what I think it is? Is this a map for life? And the answer is yes, it is a map for life. And so you can take a look at those two words and just ask yourself, you know, what is a map? <laughs> and uh, I'm sure if you are at least... Uh, uh, my age or older, and I'm going to let you guess, um, and certainly the age of the people that are on the panel this evening, you will know what a map is. If you are younger than me, it's possible that you've heard of something called Google Maps, <laughs> and maybe you are familiar with those pictures. And what's interesting with the map is it enables you to understand where you are, your current location, and also to identify on the map your destination, where you're traveling to. And so being a map for life, it enables you to literally move from where you are to where you want to be. Except this particular map is an exciting map because it doesn't have any of the geographical features or the roads or whatever that you normally see on a map. You actually define all of that. <laughs> you define the territory. You define the road. You define the path. You define the obstacles. You define the opportunity. And so Map for Life is really a tool that enables you to chart your own course. And so... If you understand what a map is, then very quickly you will have an understanding of what this tool is all about. But we've also said, you know, it's map for life. And so there's a number four in there. And it probably after about 15 or 16 years of uh, engaging with map for life and really uh, getting a deeper understanding of what I'd put together, I realized that. Although I began with a tool and I used the words my action plan to describe map, I recognized that people were going on a journey, an inner journey of discovery as they were going through the process of putting together my action plan for their life. And what became clear to me was that when people began to seek or 
deep dive deep into that inner journey, they were literally looking for a blueprint. And when I say a blueprint, maybe the original print. You know, what was the what was the purpose and plan for my life? And so as they dug deeper and deeper, there was an alignment taking place. And that alignment was, you know, my action plan and the master action plan or the master's action plan. And when these two came into alignment, there was something magical that happened. And it was the third map, which is, uh, which I call my anointed purpose. And once people step into that new territory, the original territory that they were born to fully function in, then what I began to see was miraculous, abundant provision, the fourth map. So map has a rich and deep meaning. But of course, it's a map for life. Why is that important? Well, I think that many people today don't know what life is. They're just existing. They get up every Monday morning to go to the same place that they will come back on Monday evening and complain about. I don't know if you know anyone like that. Maybe if you if you have parents, uh, you will remember that when they came home from work at the end of the day, did they come back and say, you know, there was something so exciting that happened at work today. Man, I'm so happy to be working where I am. I am blessed out of my socks. This is the best place ever. I just wish I could have been working from this place long ago. <laughs> is that what your parents used to say when they came home from work in the day? I certainly didn't hear that in my household. And you know, the, the same thing was beginning to happen in my own life. I realized I was like a robot getting up on a Monday morning, going to do something that I thought I would enjoy doing. And I thought that I would enjoy doing it for the people I was doing it for. But in truth, I began to lose the flame. I, lo I lost the passion because I could see the end of the road right at the beginning. <laughs> And even if I worked for 40 years in that situation, I would never, ever get to a point where I could pursue the true dreams and desires of my heart. And in that place of frustration, I realized that I was just existing. I had a heartbeat. I breathed oxygen. But I had to sit down in front of the television every night to escape. So life is something different. It's not what you might be experiencing right now. It's not the fact that you are living <laughs> or appear to be living. You're existing. Now, there are moments that you and I experience where we lose track of time. I, I mean, th there's, there's times where you've been so passionately engaged with something that you've even forgotten that you were supposed to have had lunch. <laughs> you, you forgot... That, you know, you're sitting in the office and suddenly you realize you're going to switch the light on. And you put the light on and you say, my goodness me, I was supposed to have left an hour and a half ago. <laughs> you know, time just evaporates when you are engaged in what you're passionate in. They say life's a journey. Enjoy the ride. I don't know if you've ever heard that term. But when I hear the term life's a journey, I recognize that a journey is defined by a destination. But yet when I ask many people today, where are you going? <laughs> you know, uh, what is your end goal? What is your end objective? What is going to be said one day when they lay your body to rest? I discovered that most people have no destination at all. And as a consequence, they are not on a journey. And if life's a journey and they are not on a journey, they are not experiencing life. So map for life is, to, uh, is a, a tool to chart your path. But more importantly, to connect with the path. There's an interesting proverb that I heard when I was young. And it was this. 
train a child up in the way that he should go. The way is also translated in some uh, depictions of this proverb as the path that they should take. And, and when you go and look deeper, it actually talks about purpose. <laughs> so train a, a, a child up in the purpose for which they were created so that when they are older, they will not depart from that calling, that purpose, that destiny. I mean, that's an amazing revelation. That is so different. And I, I believe that Map for Life enables you to go on your own journey of discovery to find that path that you were perfectly suited for. In other words, the path is already there. You just need to find it and stay on it. So Map for Life is a, is a self-authoring tool for some. For others, it's a blueprint. And when I say a blueprint, I, I'm, I come from the um, engineering world, the world of engineers. And when I started out as an engineer, they used to have, and my father used to have these as well, because he used to often talk about it. He was a, um, uh, he was a plumber by trade. Uh, later, he focused on air conditioning, and he would install air conditioning ducts in places like hospitals. And this was a maze of pipes and uh, ducting that would go through the ceiling. You would not see it necessarily when you were in a hospital. You may see on the outside these big air conditioning units with all these uh, interesting pipe works on the outside of the building, but most of it you wouldn't see. But for my father to install those pipes and that air conditioning system, he would talk about the blueprint. And the blueprint was actually a copy of the original engineering design drawings. And, and the reason it was called a blueprint was because when you put it through the ammonia process to make the copy, <laughs> the piece of paper had a blue U to it. And it was, and so for me, when we talk about Map for Life as a blueprint, we, we, we're actually talking about Map for Life being a copy of the original intent that God had for your life. And that's what people are seeking. They are sick and tired of striving to be a copy. I was watching the most boring movie on the planet, I think, uh, earlier this week. <laughs> I, I decided that I would watch a particular movie. I said, you know, I need some comedy in my life, so I'm going to watch a comedy. I didn't know the actors. I had ne never heard of the movie, but I watched it nonetheless. In fact, I had to, I had to struggle through <laughs> to watch this movie. But I was, I was watching it. I think, I think my mind was elsewhere. But suddenly, there was a moment when a young university student was having a conversation with his mother and he had had or had been at loggerheads with his mother his whole life because his mother was saying you know you are so intelligent you should be a doctor you should be a lawyer you should be an engineer you should be a accountant and she had his whole life planned out for him you should go to this university you should and he, he had this comment for her. he said mom or mother <laughs> I am not one of those production line products. And I, that caught my attention. And I suddenly realized the system that we find ourselves in, and for those of you who have been through the system, you understand. For those of you who are in school, in university, maybe you have a feeling inside of you. Maybe you've been asking yourself, why do I have to do this? Why am I here? What is the end objective? Well, I want to tell you, the end objective is for you to be spat out on the production line and you're going to be a copy of whatever the system has wanted you to be. And so I, too, am not one of those production people. At least I've got to reprogram all of the years of conditioning that I've been through. And I aim to begin that process and hopefully help others do the same. There was a great audition on... Um, America, or I think it was America's Got Talent, many years ago, um, 
a young girl by the name of Grace van der Waal. I'm, I'm sure the Americans pronounced it very differently. <laughs> but in South Africa, we would pronounce it as Grace van der Waal. Um, and she had a song that she wrote. She was a 12-year-old girl. And the song was No Name or I Don't Know My Name. But it goes long, you know, uh, it, it really talks about somebody who is rebellious. They don't want to, they, they don't know why they're going to be put in a box and be like everyone else. And they finally come to the realization, you know, now I know my name. <laughs> I'm not like everyone else. I'm not the, in an ocean of people just to be like everyone else. I'm different. I'm unique. I'm a one of a kind. And I think Map for Life enables you to connect with that. So not only is it a map, for your life but it also answers another question and um, Glenn and I were talking about that earlier this week is it it literally is a map for life it's not something you use once off <laughs> and that's it you know I've, I've come across people who said oh yes I used map for life back in 2010 and I said well what have you done since because Every single day as you step into the future, you grow, you explore, you come across new territories, you learn new things. That demands that you review, you revise, you update your map. So it's not a map, a once-off map, it's a map for life. It's a, con it's a continual process. Remember, we are on a journey. The journey is a journey. is called life, and life has a destination. I was thinking of something, Henny. Um, uh, you, you, you love to talk about a vision board being a preview of the future. And I just thought for a moment, it was earlier today, I was actually uh, considering the letters P. <laughs> I was going through the letters, you know, writing down all the words that started with P. You might think this is crazy, but of course I was doing that. I don't know how many words I wrote down, but I was fascinated about how many uh, words came. One was I saw a police vehicle drive past me on the way home, and I said, ah, that's another, that's another word, police. And then I realized for the first time what policy means. <laughs> when you have a policy, you need to have a police. Um. I also realized that when you profess something long enough, eventually you're called a professor. <laughs> so if you want to be a professor, start professing something. But I also thought about past, present, and future. And then Henny jumped into my mind, and I realized that the future is a picture that we can preview right in the present. So maybe instead of having the word future, we can actually have another P, past, present, preview. And maybe we should start seeing that. And the question is, what is your preview? Because your preview is going to predict or even procure your future. And Map for Life enables you to do that. So I hope that this, uh, I said to Henny and, and Glenn, this is going to be short. <laughs> I'm sure it's longer than what I'd originally planned. But I'm going to invite them uh, just to join me on screen and, uh, and just to get their, their take and their insights and their thoughts. Because, you know, Map for Life is unique to every single individual. When you use this tool, you become the author. I'm the compiler. I provide the, the framework. I won't even, I, in fact, the framework is, is a wrong term because that kind of wants to box you in. We, we want to we operate beyond the boundaries, beyond the borders, um, and think outside the box, as it were. So Map for Life is, is an empty tool waiting for you. It's like, it's like virgin soil that's been prepared for seed. And it doesn't matter what seed you have in your hand. Whatever seed you sow will be brought to fruition. It will be brought to its harvest. And you can reap that. So Map for Life is just like that. When you complete the process, you have literally authored your future. You have authored your first book. <laughs> 
and that's the power of this tool. So, uh, Glenn, Henny, I'm going to bring you straight in after. In fact, I'm going to just do a short little break. So when I while we while we're just listening to something briefly, um, I will be able to bring you guys in. Welcome, uh, Henny and Glenn. So nice to have you joining this evening. And um, I am also excited to see that we have people from Uganda and Zambia joining us tonight. So welcome to awesome. Eve. Um, uh, I'm just I'm still waiting to meet Adam in the flesh, but I've, I've met Eve, and uh, and uh, I've, I haven't met Sankwe yet, but I know that. Terence has been engaging with Sankwe. I've, we've had a couple messages back and forth. So welcome, Sankwe. Great to have you joining us this evening. And uh, Ronald, uh, all the way from right on the border of the DRC and Uganda. I mean, he lives in a danger zone, and it's just wonderful to have him join us. Not only does he live in a danger zone, but he also does a dangerous thing. He works as an electrician. So he's, he's always working with power and you, you can understand in Africa, for those of you who live in Africa, the power is here and then it's not here and it's here and it's not here. I can just imagine being an electrician <laughs> and you're not too sure. Is there power? Or is there no power? But uh, Ronald, great to have you joining us. And um, I want to start this evening. I know that the people that are listening have, uh, have met both of you in previous sessions, but just, just very briefly, uh, Quickly introduce yourself and when did you start using Map for Life? Any, would you like to go for it? You just need to unmute yourself there and we'll be able to hear. Um, uh, there we let's go. Let's try again. Let me try again. So, yeah, I'm Andy from Rudapurt. I started using Map for Life in December last year. So, it's almost a year right now. Uh, and, and, and I think I can summarize what's happened. I probably achieved more in this 10 or 11 months of my life than I've achieved in probably the other 49 years. So, but we'll talk a little bit about it later. But yeah, that's my story. Some nice things that I want to share with you later tonight as well. You know, it's, just, it's interesting how we talk about power and, and those types of things. <laughs> and of course, uh, Glenn is right in that place. So for those of you who see that uh, Glenn is not, quite there at the moment. Uh, I will bring him back in as soon as as soon as we are able to. Um, I, I, I would believe that he has experienced something that so many of us are familiar with here in South Africa at the moment. <laughs> Henny, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, and I wanted to, to ask very briefly, um, I see Glenn is back. So, Glenn, I'm going to bring you back in. Welcome. It's good to good to have you joining us. Lovely Thanks. to see people make a plan, you know, like just – and I know <laughs> that this is going to be short, so um, – No problem uh, at all. Quickly introduce yourself. Fantastic. All right. Glenn Easton, sorry about that. Uh, my laptop just died on me. And uh, with load shooting in South Africa, it's unfortunately one of those challenges. But we're on my phone now, so we're going strong. Glenn East Jones, I started Map for Life back in 2013. And in 2014, I did the mastery course and haven't stopped since. I've been using it continuously, literally daily for that many years. So uh, and thoroughly enjoying it. It's part of my life. And it's going to be part of my life until I go to heaven one day. So thank you. Amen. I like <laughs> I like. I like that. Let's, let's hope it's going to be a long use of of map for life um just just your thoughts uh glenn i, I want I want you to share first because uh I, I i know where you're at right now in terms of all the the power and so on um sure. just, just your take on on map i either a comment about something that i shared or or your own perspective of what is map for life for you? 
absolutely. You know, it, it's interesting. I, I often speak to people and I ask them about this concept of what is their purpose, especially when I meet them for the first time. And it's a bit of a shocker to them because they always look at me with this very strange look on their face. You know, you'd swear by not asking them something that's like really from some other planet. Um, but it's actually such a simple question, really, and we should actually be answering that question, uh, in fact, very early in our lives. And, and as far as I'm concerned, Map for Life does exactly that. It's, it's about discovering your purpose and finding out what the original intent is. And, and, and I so often use the example of a pen. And I say the original intent of a pen is to write. And the potential is to write poetry, to write books, to write messages, beautiful letters, you name it. The challenge is, is that we tend to use it for other means. We'll scratch in our ear, we'll scratch our back, we'll stir coffee, we'll, we can even use it to actually kill someone, believe it or not. So we use it for many purposes. And, and so that's the challenge with most people. They are using their original intent for other purposes. And you spoke very well today and tonight about this concept of getting up in the morning, going to a job every single day, coming back and going back to that same job and just doing it year after year after year and not getting any enjoyment out of it. There's no abundant life. Uh, the three things that you so often talk about, Glenn, is that the concept of the problem is simply directionless existence. And, and yet the aspiration is actually abundant life. We all want the so-called abundant life. Um, and to me, the solution is exactly what you say. It's about purposeful living. And that's what MAP does. MAP for Life provides you with purposeful living. It actually gives you that, that map, that route, that, that plan to go ahead. I think just to, to end off here, you know, I, I so often think of that, that I think there was an, it's not a nursery rhyme. There was a movie about that young girl and the rabbit. I think it's the hare. And asks her where you're going, and she doesn't know. And he goes, "Well, that, then you're going to go there. That's where you're going to go. You know, if you don't have a plan, then you're not going to get anywhere." And the sad thing is, is that if you don't have a plan, you'll probably end up following someone else's plan. And I certainly don't want to do that. So, yeah, that, that's. That, I mean, that, that's a a really important point that you made at the end there. That if you if if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But more importantly, I think the reality is that most people are following someone else's plan for their life. It could be the plan of their parents. It could be the plan of their spouse. It could be the plan of their children. It could be the plan today of the social media advertising. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, you, click on a, you click on a link and Barbara Twink. Where, where is it? What is that? Uh, clickety click something. Barbara. something. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I remember something from a long time ago, um, but the, the, you know, the, this is actually what's happening today. You know, people are going clickety click, and before they know it, they they off in a route in a direction. They they're following somebody else's get rich quick scheme or something like that, and they've missed their purpose. They're chasing profit. Um, so this is this is a really important point to realize that if you do not have your own plan, then you are following someone else's plan, or you have the default plan, which is a plan for failure. So exactly. I love, you know, I love uh, my friend Eve. She she uses these words that I've got to go and look up in a dictionary and say, what is incorrigible? And, uh, and so I looked it up. Thank you, Eve. I like that word. <laughs> and I'm going to leave it for everyone else to go and look it up so they can see what it means. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I need to expand my vocabulary, and I've just done that this evening. Thank you so much, Henny. Your thoughts on um, Glenn? If you if if you if we lose signal, we understand. Okay, so nope. uh, but I'll we'll come back to him. Yeah, I, I, I think two moments. The, the the first one when I started in in December last year, um, when I when I did some research. Map for Life was a, it was a lifestyle. It was a way of doing things. It was it was really the launch pad into the future of of any, um, and and that's what I believed, and and that's what I still believe. But now looking back at it down the line, about eleven months down the line, something something interesting for me uh, came out of it. Um, I was attending a breakfast on 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 Friday morning, and the gentleman 
tell us the story, and the story is for me for me is very relevant. The the the, the father had the son, which was one very naughty boy. He was, was always in trouble, etc. But when he finished school, he said to his dad, he wants to go and study to be a pastor. And his dad said, thought, no, that's not going to work. And, and and the boy went and he and he finished the studies and everything. And when he was ready to do his first sermon, he got onto the onto the stage, and his dad was sitting there. And, and this young man stood there and he said, who goes to the gym? And his father just thought, oh no, here it comes. And a whole bunch of people raised their hands. And then he asked the question, so why do you go to the gym? And he got some answers, but then he said, it's, it's mainly three reasons why you would go to the gym. And the, the first one is quite simple. That's because you want to keep in shape. You want to try and stay healthy and you want to do what you need to do. The, the second bunch of people would go to the gym to get some serious muscles so that they can get on stage with a number on their, on their fuffies um, that will then show that they are bodybuilders. And the third crowd of people would go and great, gain some muscles, but then put it to work by becoming a, a fireman or a lifeguard or something like that. And then he, he raised the question to say, so why are you in church? And, and I think for me, that almost raises the same thing. Why map for life? Am I going to just grab it so that I can feel better about myself? Am I going to grab it to just show the people that I've got mapped for life and, and, and almost focus on, on me, myself and I and make it a success? Or am I going to do what I decided to do was I gained some unbelievable knowledge. I, I've gained some unbelievable experiences that I cannot keep for myself. I need to share that with the world. I need to go and empower other people to find that and to take that to the next level. So I think that's where I stand with, with map for life as we speak. Benny, thank you for bringing it up because uh, I, I've uh, been asked many times over the last 24 years. In fact, it started, I think, it started right in the beginning. Um, somebody asked me, I was, I was uh, a different person. I've, I've, kept, I've kept this photograph on my, on my desk. You know, th this was me. So if anybody wants to see, that, that was me, literally. And at that stage in my life, I had people asking me, what is your succession plan? <laughs> So what do you, what is a succession plan? <laughs> and people were asking that. And you know, so for, for the last 20 plus years, I've been thinking about the succession plan. And you know, today when people ask me that question, what is your succession plan? I say you are. Because literally, when you start connecting with your personal map, yes. you, you 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 can't keep it to yourself. It, it, yes. it, it germinates something inside of you that has to be shared, and 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 Map for Life is. Uh, I'm I'm, beca I'm beginning to appreciate it more and more because it it's like a, it's like a chameleon in a sense, a chameleon. Uh, ooh, we used to we used to love chameleons when I was in primary school. I I went to a farm school. And every now and then, somebody would catch <laughs> a chameleon. I mean, these things are fascinating. I mean, you know, you take it and you put it on, on your on your um, uh, little uh, pen box, you know, where you've got all your pencils in, and it's a bright orange, and the chameleon would begin to change. <laughs> you know, you and then you take it off and put it on some other color thing, and it'll begin to change. It's just fascinating to watch how this thing changed and adapted to whatever situation it found itself in. And essentially, Map for Life is like that. It's a structured process, but it is flexible to the point where it can be adapted to any application. That's so if you have a journey defined by a destination, there's one tool that's available right now. <laughs> I'm not familiar with any other tool that can enable you to chart your own course to, and then to navigate that course to its fulfillment. Um, so it requires action, but when you act on it, and when it's, you know, Henny, like you were saying, when it really connects with you, you can't but share it. And when you share it, that's what the succession plan is all about. Um, Glenn, I can see you getting excited about something, so please tell us. <laughs> uh, you know, when you when you talk about things like this, I really do get excited. Um, for me, it's it's really about the process, you know. Um, the first time I, I started looking at Map for Life, when, when I did the course the first time around, and it was actually like almost like a day course that I did, 
And uh, it was almost actually a case that my wife said, you must go and do this course. And I thought, ah, oh, no, I'll just go and do this course. But you know what it's like. Eh? And we typically take the thing and plonk it in the shelf and don't do anything about it. But um, w what was fascinating to me was actually, as I started working through the process of the five-step methodology, that's when the penny dropped and things started happening. I, it just started opening my mind. And, you know, I took about um, limited belief systems um, I think we get so caught up in the world's ways of thinking and, and, and we get so caught up in the education system and, and the things around us. And, and Map for Life for me just opens your mind, expands things and gives you a process to work through that really assists you in that process and gets you to start thinking outside the box and beyond. Um, so for me, it's that process that's so important as well. And that's Glenn, what Matt Glenn, you just, you've, you've touched on something I heard on, on Monday. Now, this particular quote was not referring to to map for life the book okay but i'm gonna i'm gonna use it in that context and yes, uh, yes. and and the, the the quote was this think outside the box uh yes but not yes. outside the book now that was talking about a a, a a different book to what i what i want to talk about now in terms of map so in terms of map coming back to your idea with the pen you know if you think it ink it um Correct. it's from that perspective, think, do your thinking in the map. Sure. But when you're thinking in the map, think outside the box, kind of. So think in the book with your writing, write it all down there, write your thoughts down, but think outside the box. And something we did with Map for Life in 2019, we started doing it. And I've done more of that is to remove all of the borders. We used to have these borders around each page. We've removed that to create the idea that there are no limits exactly that you, can, that you can think beyond the boundaries beyond the borders beyond the box but correct let your thinking be written um, correct can, so I, can i just can I ask very quickly, um I, I was actually on a at a seminar this morning quickly and the chapter was speaking mentioned something it was fascinating to me the people that were at the seminar were probably all about the same age as us. Um, there were two children there, but they were probably about uh, 20, 21 years old, two, two girls. The rest just, of us... Just, were... just, sorry, just to, I just want to make a correction there. Henny and I are much younger. Eh? <laughs> Here we mm -hmm. go. 100% with that. Okay. Needless to say, he, he, he asks us a question and he says, I'm going to give you one minute, just one minute very quickly to write down as many ideas as you can think of. And he says... How else would you use a balloon? So instead of just blowing up a balloon and using it as a balloon, what else could you use a balloon for? And he says, go. And then after one minute, he stops us and he starts asking us all about how many ideas did you think of? We don't have to give the ideas, but how many ideas do we think of? I happen to think of four ideas in that whole minute. I mean, that was actually quite a shame. I thought only four ideas. But he said something interesting. He said that he'd done this test with children between the ages of 10 to 15. And some of them came up with, I think the average was about 18 ideas, the average. And that's quite fascinating. And it just goes to show how we are so conformed to the world's way. And we, we are stunted in our way of thinking. And again, I want to say kudos to MAP and kudos to you, Glenn, for putting MAP together. Because it's, that's exactly what it does. It opens your mind. It, it takes you through that process and just expands everything for you. Really great. You know what's exciting is we're sitting we're sitting in the dining room with Eve this evening, and uh, it's uh, so we we participating in the evening meal. Um, great to be in Uganda. I can feel the heat, awesome. <laughs> the, the humidity. That's what's that. That's why we're feeling so hot in Pretoria this evening is because we're actually on the on the table in Uganda with uh, with Eve and her family. Uh, but also welcome to to Noah all the way from Tanzania. Uh, Noah, tell us where you're from. What city are you from? Uh, Dar es Salaam or Arusha or where where might you find yourself? Tell us. We'd love to hear. And uh, welcome. Good to have you part of the session. Uh, Henny. Yeah, I, I, I think when when Glenn spoke as well, it, it it sort of triggered something in my mind as well. Everybody's talking about the future and and, and the wonderful things called electric cars. If we if we if we look at a journey and, and, and let's pick a spot, let's say I need to drive from, from Joburg to Cape Town, which is about fourteen hundred kilometers. 
with a new technology, there will be an, a car that's been driven by Google. But this car can only drive on the line. There should be a line on the road and it's going to read the line and it's going to read certain things. And it's, it's almost stuck in a system. And that's how it's going to get there. With, with, with Map for Life, I've actually got options to get to Cape Town. Uh, I've got a guideline and I've got a map where I'm going. But I'm not limited. I can actually use what is given to me called talents and skills to get there. I can get on a plane. I can use the train. Uh, I can drive with my car. I can take a detour and, and, and take the scenic route if I want. I can get on the highway and I can just go straight there. Uh, I can sleep over. I can do whatever. With, with, with the technology and the cars, that car is going to stick to the line in the system and it's going to drive it and it's going to get there. And, I, and I'm assuming it's not going to be a nice journey because you're not really in control of it. And, and I think that's what MAP did for me. It, it just gave me freedom to go where I wanted to go on my terms. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm still working on some of the system terms as we speak, but I'm, I'm starting to, to live the life that I was deemed to live. I'm, I'm living that life and I'm learning so much more about myself because I've been given freedom. And Glenn was speaking about the, the lack of imagination because of the system. I'm, I'm starting to get the imagination back. I'm starting to see things and I'm thinking, I just came up with a great idea. How did that happen? It, it's starting to happen more and more because of me doing what is what is what is something that I'm passionate about. Um, for the for the for the people online, I started with Glenn and I started listening to things and I started writing things down. And before I knew, I wrote a book. So I'm an author of my first book and I've already put down the the, the outline for the second book and I'm busy writing the second book. And it's just writing down what I've learned. So it was it started off as a process saying, what am I learning? What am I learning? What is my passion? What is happening? And I'm putting these things on paper and then. All of a sudden, that's a book. So, so just following my passion, just following the lifestyle methodology that I was given, the simple steps is is creating an awesome life for me. And I think that's the power of map. You know what? Uh, what uh, Dr. Yona from uh, Tanzania said to me many years ago. He said, "Map for life is not the answer; it's the way to get your answer." Yeah, I think that's... it's a, a fascinating view of Map for Life as a tool. And, you know, map the descriptions of Map for Life are endless. Uh, every new person that connects with Map for Life has a different description of what it is. Um, I've written many of these down, and one of them is it's a creation catalyst. <laughs> you know, map for Life is a creation catalyst because it enables you to, uh, to think of new ideas connect with the impossible, write it down and make it happen. Um, and so through using Map for Life, you're going to bring things into existence that never before existed. Can I ask something? Glenn, I, you're going to share something in a moment. But ha have you been aware of your breathing? Uh, Henny, have you been aware of the fact that you've been breathing or that your heart's beating? I, I just, I want, you know, this is a, a, maybe a, one of those silly questions, but for those of you listening <laughs> to this evening's show or or, um, or the recording, I just want you to hold your breath for, let's, let's do it for 10 seconds, okay? Just hold your breath. Now, I'm not sure if that was 10 seconds or not, but I began to experience what it means to lack something yeah. to be in a space of lack to live in a world where you feel like you don't have mm -hmm. and yet we are breathing constantly we are experiencing abundance and because we experience abundance with every heartbeat, with every breath we take, we know what abundance is. But we're living in a world where we have a feeling of lack. Why is that? I think it's because we're not in our purpose. If we step in our purpose, it's going to be like breathing. It's going to be like that heartbeat. You're not even aware of anything because you're in a state of abundance. Um, and I think we're living in a world where it's like holding your breath. It's like treading water. It's like fighting for survival. 
and that's not what life should be. It exactly. should be an exciting, enjoyable journey with great hope, great anticipation, lots of exciting surprises, and lots of friendly people along the way. Glenn? Um, you, you know, that, that's such an interesting question that you asked in terms of holding your breath. Um, I always think of of the name of our creator, Yahweh. And if you think about it, you can't actually pronounce that really if you write it in the Hebrew language because there's no consonants there. There's no vowels there. It's the Yehua, you know. <laughs> That's how you would pronounce it effectively. But you can breathe it in and out as you breathe in and out and you can say his name. So if you breathe in and out, you can actually say, So we are breathing the name of our Creator every single time we take breath, um, and, and that that always reminds me of the abundance of life, <laughs> and um, just the, the the privilege of literally just being able to breathe, and getting up every morning and actually going out and doing what God has called us to do. It's just fascinating. It just puts a different perspective on things. Eh? So <laughs> it's really amazing. So maybe maybe what we should be doing is 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 uh, just holding our breath for some time each day to remind us that actually we do have access to abundance and that's maybe the secret to what life should all be about and if we're not experiencing that feeling of complete relaxation no stress <laughs> I think uh, those people who were hospitalized uh, in 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 recent years. Um, who were literally struggling to take their breath would have um, will be able to really relate to the value of being able to breathe freely. Um, Absolutely. And unless you know, breathing is so necessary that if you uh, uh, people who drown, the only reason they drown is because at some point the brain says, "Listen, buddy." If you don't get oxygen now, we're dead. So we, we're going to take our chances here. And, of course, they breathe in the water because there's that reflex react or reflex reaction and you breathe in uh, when you shouldn't. Um, so at some point, it, it overrides. There's a, just a quick thought that comes to my mind right now, and that is uh, in, in 1985, I was, uh, uncon I was knocked unconscious by one of those big, farmers from the uh, Pretoria area um, and I, I'm not going to explain all the background but it was it was a competitive sport and it just so happened that I, I, I put my, 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 my jaw in the wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> and my jaw met his foot and and for the next 15 minutes I was out cold and I will never forget the moment that I woke up and i can still every time i talk about this i can still feel my eyes bouncing around in my eye sockets desperately trying to understand where i was it got to a point i, I couldn't recognize that because they'd moved me to a place that i was not familiar with i hadn't been to before and while i was lying there my brain took over it was almost as if, listen, buddy, you're not finding out. I need to know where I am right now. You better hurry up. If you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it for you. And before I could stop it, <laughs> it moved my lips. And out of my mouth came the words. I mean, you see it in the movies. <laughs> you think they make, they don't make this up. This is what happened. What came out of my mouth were the words, where am I? And so loudly that a person sitting five meters from where I was lying came running over to me to explain exactly where I was, what had happened. Only then could I begin to function. And so it's such an important part. And one of the key things with Map for Life is it enables you to answer that basic question, that, that absolutely necessary question, which is the beginning of every journey is, where am I? And, and so, uh, you know, if you've ever been knocked out or if you've been on a bus trip and you've woken up as a passenger, the first thing you do is look around and you ask the question, where am I? <laughs> okay. And once you know where you are, you can relax again. And so I think MAP enables you to make that very important step. Uh, Henny? Yeah, I, I think something 
major needs to happen. You need to swap glasses. Um, one of the things that I needed to do was to, to swap the glasses where I see a world system for, for the map glasses where I can see myself and my future. I think that was a, a key thing that needed to happen. I needed to see to see me, to see the potential in me, to see my purpose, to see what I was going to do and, 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 and what my creator wanted me to do. And I think as part of that journey, you start creating habits and routines. And, and one of the routines that I've got in the morning is, 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 is really just that. You, you sit and listen and you just breathe in and out and you, and you sort of just find peace, inner peace within yourself. And, and, and I think that then starts triggering processes of gratitude, et cetera, et cetera, to say, I'm still alive. I'm still on this journey. I'm still going to do things. So, so I, th I think things happen. When you swap the glasses for 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 looking into your purpose uh, as opposed to the worldly glasses that put you in a mold that makes you a copy of of, of a system um it's it's nice being yourself it's nice being true to yourself and 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 doing what you were created to do i love your analogy of of spectacles because uh, you know i'm sure there are people that are listening to us this evening that have no idea what it means to wear spectacles but perhaps they've used a magnifying glass or they've looked through a microscope uh, or they've looked through a pair of binoculars or something. And what those lenses do is they enable you to see things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. I understand what it means to be somebody who's blind. <laughs> well, at least, you know, kind of uh, half blind. And I know the consequences of that. But when I put these spectacles on, it brings things into focus. It enables me to see with clarity. I stop kicking my toes. I stop bumping into things. I start recognizing people. I start adjusting my trajectory because I can see. And so, uh, you know, so that's such a beautiful example of what MAP does uh, that you just gave there, Henny. It, 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 it gives people that new perspective. It gives them that clarity of, let's talk about vision and purpose and even mission so that when they get up in the morning they know where they're going uh you talked about breathing you know and i and i've heard of i don't know much about it but i've heard of breathing therapy but i also remember as a as a young child you know or or, or seeing uh young children uh being hurt in an accident of some kind uh and they 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 might um be in a panic situation and you hear the parents say just breathe <laughs> just breathe and they they get that they they inhale and 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 suddenly they begin to calm down and you know just that that breathing therapy i was talking about just just some deep breaths when you've when you may be feeling anxious about something, just calms you down. It's an amazing thing that it does. So um, maybe we're onto something yet this evening. <laughs> Len, I see Ronald has written something. He, he writes over here, uh, we have limited our potential gifts and skills when we fail to adjust and adapt the opportunities and environments we find ourselves in every day of our lives. I What, what, what I thought about when I heard that was um, we're living in a very interesting world, aren't we? Hmm. I, you know, we, we're in a place where what people may have experienced a hundred years ago, back in the 1918 to 19, 1920s, somewhere in that vicinity, <laughs> the world was in turmoil. All of the things that they felt were certain were became uncertain. Uh, there was... Uh, to some degree, a lot of movement of people, uh, things were changing, uh, governments had different opinions to what you held. I mean, it seemed to be a bit chaotic. And I think today, people are also finding themselves in a place where they can, uh, they can identify with maybe what people were going through a century ago. So maybe this is a time when people truly need to map the future. Because if we don't have a map for the future, the future is uncertain. But when you've got a map, 
it's certain. I, I was talking to someone from Zimbabwe, and they said whenever they came to South Africa, <laughs> they made sure they had a map in the car, you know, especially one for Johannesburg, because the map was their one guarantee that they'd be able to find their way around if they got lost. It was kind of their uh, almost like their teddy bear, you know, like the, the little baby has a teddy bear when it goes to sleep. The map was their little teddy bear. They would bring it with them <laughs> and they would keep referring to it. it. They didn't look at the map when they in Zimbabwe and leave it at home and say, no, we're okay. We'll get to jail. No, <laughs> they kept that map with them. And all the time, the more, the, the more they had, they entered into uncharted territory in a sense, places they hadn't been, the more they referred to their map. And I think, that is an important part when it comes to to your map is that you you know you need to constantly refer to it you can't do it once and leave it on the shelf or leave it in the book in the somewhere else this is something that you need to be looking at. and what i like about uh, glenn is whenever i meet you i can see that it's a daily tool that you're using it's not something that you used once before the year started You've used it once before the year started, once before the month started, once before the week started, and once before the day started, and during the day. And that's really what we should be doing. So uh, you're setting a really great example. And uh, if we can all begin to do that, I think we're going to see incredible results. Our time is almost through. So I would like, um, Glenn, just a final word from, from your side um, and Henny from, your, from yourself as well. And then that'll be our show for the evening. And uh, and I'd love to hear from those people who've been watching, you know, what is Map for Life for you? Uh, because you will be able to share something with us. I should have asked that question earlier, actually. Go ahead, Glenn. Great. Um, you mentioned a proverb earlier, and I just wanted to mention a proverb myself as well. Uh, that concept of many are the plans in a man's heart, or a woman's heart for that matter. Many are plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. And for me, again, we're coming back to Map for Life. I really believe that Map for Life is a mandate from God. And if we apply the principles, work through the process, we will follow after that and we will live that abundant life. So that's that's my that's my last parting words. I yeah, I, I like I like what you just said. Sorry, I, I have to comment on this because what I've what I've picked up with Map is that, you know, like you were saying, Henny as well, is that there's like a journey of transition. You know, you start off and you have one idea of what you're going to use this tool for and what it can do for you. But as you use it more and more, you suddenly realize there's this transition that happens and you begin to align. You, you almost step into your sweet spot. You, you begin to shift into a place where you become someone who's actually having an impact and influence uh, in the world in which you live. You start doing things that are meaningful to others and as a result experiencing fulfillment so um that's that's a very powerful uh, insight thanks for that uh, that reference uh glenn uh henny yeah. yeah i grew up on 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 the platteland as, as as we call it i think it's called rural areas in in in, in most other countries uh in, in, a, in a town called folks and, and when prairie, I went to my... the prairies and the plains in america or something exactly so the jungle, when I was... the jungle in uganda <laughs> yes, when, when, I, when I went for my driver's license, there was one robot in town. So, I mean, obviously you knew you were going to go past that robot because or traffic light as it's called. Uh, um, and then when I finished matric and I got my license, we moved to Johannesburg. Uh, I've never seen so many cars and, 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 and robots and, and things around me. And it was very confusing because it's roads everywhere. But what we did was there was, I stayed in Kempton Park. There was an airport called Jan Smuts back in those days. It's these days it's called Our Tambo. But I could find my way home from Jan Smuts. So whenever I got lost, there was signs everywhere that pointed me to, to, to Jan Smuts Airport. And if I get there, I knew I could get home. And I think Map for Life is for me is exactly that. Go and find the signs, go and find the passions and the things that keeps on pointing you back to your inner self, the true self. Go and find that. And once you've got that, you will find your way home. You will find where you're supposed to go. So make sure you go and find those signs that point you to the true self, and you should be set. Excellent. My map is my compass, my north star, 
my Swiss army knife, <laughs> as one person put it. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to be part of uh, this panel discussion this evening. Thank you to every single person who joined us online this evening and who's still there. We'd love to hear more from you. Please join us every week Wednesday. And uh, who knows, maybe one day you'll be bold enough to join us in studio and uh, experience the joy of learning together, sharing ideas together, and beginning to transcend from this world system to maybe the original system that we're supposed to be operating in and step into that life of abundance. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening further. Uh, good night, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Bye.